All right, we're down to our number one mistake that keeps new homeschooling moms overwhelmed, overworked, and overstressed. So far, we've gotten number three, the lone wolf syndrome, where we talked about trying to figure things out alone and doing it in isolation. And our number two mistake, which is the cart before the horse, learning things out of order and really making yourself more overwhelmed and doing things without having a strong foundation and understanding what you're doing following a nice sequence. And now we're down to the number one thing that I think really could make or break. <laughs> and that is not having a plan. So here I am in my teacher mode <laughs> and I'm going to add not having a plan. as the number one, number one. All right, so what does this mean? It means that you're just sort of flying by the seat of your pants when it comes down to, okay, I'm ready to do the schooling, I'm ready to make all of this work. You are just sort of making it up as you go and not having something that you're actually following, a structure. A loose structure that allows you to still bring in your brilliance and your personality but a structure nonetheless that you can follow to um, keep you going <laughs> all right and why is this so important one of the main things is creativity so if you're just sort of doing it on the fly and you're like oh great I know what to do I'm just gonna start doing it you will maybe run out of ideas um, you know, especially if you've got younger children who you are just, you know, in preschool and that kindergarten, age, even though we're not truly starting the true academics until grade one, there's still maybe a lot that you need to kind of put into place for your five and six year old. They need some kind of a structure. And even though their main job is to play and to, um, you know, grow and move and run and jump and all of that, you need some kind of a structure to keep you going because what are you going to do with them every day? You know, that may last for a little while. You may have a few ideas for um, crafts and stories or something, but then after a while, um, it's back to this, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do today? What are we gonna do tomorrow? There's, you sort of run out. <laughs> you run out of steam, run out of ideas, and then you're just sort of flying by the seat of your pants and making things up. Another very important thing that I find a lot with moms is that without some kind of a structure to follow, you feel like you're not doing enough. Um, am I covering everything? Am I, am I doing everything I need to do? I don't feel like we're doing anything. Without some kind of accountability or something to measure what you're doing, um, you know, the days of playing outdoors and even though the child is doing what they need to do and the singing and the baking, um, from the outside looking in, it, it could feel like, what is she doing? Especially when you've got these sort of preschool and kindergarten age children, your friends, um, children have maybe gone off to school and they are probably learning to read even if they're in the kindergarten um, If they're in preschool, they're learning <laughs> letters and they're starting to get some foundational um, academics and so You know, it's hard during that time because you are not doing that you're doing something else you're you know bringing this Waldorf environment to your child and letting them be a child, but um, when it comes down to like, well, what are you actually learning? Or what are you actually doing all day with your child? There's this weird space <laughs> where, um, you know, people maybe question you, maybe your spouse or um, a sister, a friend, or somebody starts asking, and then maybe you start asking, gee, I don't know, maybe we're not doing enough. W what have we been doing for the last three months? You know, there's nothing to go by. I don't have any, any way to measure up what I've done. And they, are, they seem to be happy, but I don't know. So it's this, I, this, I don't think we're doing enough or um, you know, maybe I need to be doing something else. Another very important reason to have some kind of a loose structure to follow, a plan, is again about this energy. And actually doing the school part, you know, storytelling and doing the crafts and painting and you know, exploring nature and doing the physical part of it is really fun when you feel the confidence and know what you're doing. And I want you to spend your energy on that again, instead of trying to figure out what to do. So if you have something to follow, 
you're one, a lot more apt to actually get things done that you want to do. And two, again, you don't have to kind of come with it, come up with it on your own. You can enjoy the crafts, you can enjoy the things you're doing instead of trying to figure out what is it that we're gonna do? Oh my gosh, I wanted to do this craft, but I don't have the right materials and, and, um, and, and having everything ready to go and, and for the craft. They're ready to do it, but they don't have the stuff. And by the time they get it all, searching the house for it all and realizing they don't have it, the kids are gone and they're off into the yard playing and there goes your, there goes your crafting time. So um, it is fun to do the stuff. It's not so fun to try to figure out what to do. That's the kind of part that, um, you know, it's that planning, it's that working through what's what. And by having a loose structure, it gives you the freedom. There is freedom in, in structure. There is freedom to saying, okay, I have a springboard. I have something here to follow and I can follow it, you know, line by line, word for word. Um, I can do most of it. And then if it seems like too much, I can take out or I can follow it in general ways and still bring a lot of my creativity and a lot of more, you know, different things in. I found this is what I did. At first I followed a very step-by-step, -step, a real structure of what to do. And then as I got going and going, oh, I, it makes sense and I'm sort of getting it now. I was able to back off a little and just still use something as a structure, but start bringing in some of my own things or, you know, customizing it to fit your child. Saying, oh, my child loves butterflies. Let's, you know, really do a lot more with butterflies and we'll take this project here that was about ants and we'll make it for butterflies. And, you know, so it's taking what you've got in the structure and then kind of tweaking it a little bit so that it fits you and it fits your family a little bit better. And basically having a plan just frees your energy, frees your time, it frees you up to say, okay, I don't have to try to figure this all out. I've got something right here that I can follow along because you're busy. You already have family chores that you're doing. You're running a household. You may have other siblings. You may have a baby. You may work part-time. Um, we're, we're all busy these days yet we still want to give our children this amazing Waldorf at home education, but we're finding it harder and harder to do because of all these other things that are going on. And I don't want that to be the reason why you throw in the towel. Here are some tips on how to avoid mistake. Number one, not having a plan. Okay. Well, the most obvious thing is to have a plan. <laughs> so how do you get a plan for this? Um, well, there's several things to do. You could, you can make your plan. Um, by gathering all the information that you can find out there. This is sort of the way I did it because at the time there was really nothing else. And so it took me years, I will say, of gathering information, of making mistakes and um, going, oops, that didn't work. Let's try this, wasting a lot of time and energy. But I was, I was so dedicated and passionate about bringing Waldorf to my children at home and living this Waldorf life at home for my children that I really wanted it. And so I stuck with it and um, in the end created a plan you know that worked and so that's the first thing is to take everything that you find out there sift through all the materials and come up with a plan that works for you i mean it's out there all the information is available to you you just have to have the time and energy to research it to sift through what's working and make it kind of tweak it so that it fits for you because a lot of it is is out there for classrooms and schools um, and to try to kind of bring that down into a way that'll fit you at home. All right, that's one way. Sounds tiring already to me. <laughs> the best way that I know is to find a plan that someone's already made. <laughs> you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can use another's plan. You know, like I said earlier in the video training, um, stepping on the shoulders of someone who's been there before you allows someone to reach up and pull you forward and say, hey, guess what? You don't have to do this. Um, you don't have to make your own plan. I've got a plan here for you. So um, having, you know, finding a plan that fits, finding something that you understand and really gets to the heart of Waldorf and helps you create your homeschool in your own home in a way that will be authentic for you um, is a tip I can, I can give because there are several out there, several plans, and you gotta find the one that fits and what feels right to you and what speaks to you so that it'll make sense. So if you see yourself in those mistakes that I've been talking about during this video series, making some of them, making all of them, or 
thinking you may fall into those traps. And if you're also someone who's thinking, gosh, I don't, I know I need some more guidance. I know I need some more training so that I am well prepared to offer this type of education to my child. I mean, you are going to be your child's educator so that you need to make sure you're prepared. You need to know what you're doing unless you're planning on just kind of flying by the seat of your pants. And I don't recommend that by any means. So I'd love for you to click the button below and set up a homeschool strategy session with me We'll get on the phone or on Skype and I will ask you some questions about where you are, where you want to go, and I will see if I have a training or program that will match up and will give you what you need right now to move on to the next step, to really get your homeschool um, days in order to set you on your path of becoming the ch your child's educator and giving them everything that you need, that they need to be successful and that you need to be successful as you are just jumping into homeschooling. So again, click the button below and I hope to talk to you soon. All right, thanks again, bye-bye.